the title of this uh, workshop is Evoking the Peace of the World. And I would like, from the very beginning, to dispel one notion of peace and evoke another notion of peace. We have an idea called world peace, which we think of as harmony or non-conflict or something like that. And can you please just throw that concept out of your mind because we are going to talk or experience, hopefully, something much deeper, which is the peace of the world. So there is this idea of peace as conflict resolution, but there is a deeper quality of peace, a deeper understanding of peace, a deeper energy of peace that is completely beyond this world of duality to which we as spiritual wayfarers have access. And one thinks of the saying of Ramana Maharshi when he says, we are always peace. To get rid of the idea that we are not peace is all that is required. Why? Because the very essence of our being, the soul, is peace. There is a state, you just go within your soul and you are in this state of peace. It is the nature of the soul, the sheath of the soul, what covers the soul is bliss, known in Sanskrit as Anandamaya Kosha. Within that sheath of bliss, in the soul, there is peace. It is complete peace has nothing to do with outer experience, outer circumstance, nothing to do with the outer world. You can be in the midst of the supermarket, in the midst of the traffic jam, in the midst of a difficult situation at work, and one is in this peace. And part of the Sufi path is actually to take you through the stages of the journey to the state of being in peace, the state of bhakka, abiding in God, abiding in peace. And traditionally, this quality of peace, this peace, is a gift of a great teacher to his disciples. And one thinks of this saying of Christ, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. That's the gift of a great teacher to his disciples, the gift of this quality of peace. So we all have this within us, but of course it is difficult to access. This peace, the state of peace, this energy of peace, this being of peace. Now I would like to take the next step, which is to understand that the human being is a microcosm of the whole. And for example, Ibn Arabi describes how the Hadith, God created Adam upon his own form, holds both for the great Adam, which is the cosmos in its entirety, and for the small Adam, who is the human being as the microcosm. He explains, he placed within man every one of his attributes, just as he placed all of his attributes within the cosmos and the three basic worlds of the macrocosm, the spiritual, imaginal, and corporeal, are represented in man by the spirit, the soul, and the body. So we are a microcosm for the whole. The world is the macrocosm, we are the microcosm. Now what does this mean? It means the same center of peace that is within us which as servants of God, we can have direct access to. As spiritual wayfarers, we can access, also exists within the spiritual body of the world, within the macrocosm. It's very, very simple. The world is a spiritual body of which we are the microcosm. It is exactly imaged, just as we are imaged in the form of God, it is imaged in the form of God. And so, within the spiritual being of the world, there is this peace. There is this place of peace, this central spiritual core of peace.
A peace which has nothing to do with conflict is much deeper than conflict. It belongs to this oneness that is in the core of the world, in the core not of the physical body of the world, but of the spiritual body of the world, just like it is in our core. And there is a direct connection between our heart and the heart of the world, between this center of peace within us and the center of peace within the world. And it is very, very powerful. Anybody who has had a direct experience of this peace within them knows how powerful it is. Once you are in that, nothing can disturb you. Everything is just like ripples on the current. And so it seems to me that if we are going to really to work with peace, why not return to that central spiritual peace that belongs to the spiritual body of the world? Why not go and work with the real peace of the world? Why not evoke it into our world, into our surface world that is so full of discord, in the same way as you do in your own individual spiritual practice? Let us work with the peace of the world. Now, one of the things about this central spiritual body of the world is it needs to be invited. Just as you have to ask to have access to your own inner peace. You pray, you meditate, you aspire, you cry to God, grant me peace. And then one day through his grace, he opens this door within the heart, this ancient door to which Sufis have access. And he gives you the taste of this peace of your own soul, of your own eternal nature. The same is true of the world. And there is this direct connection between our heart and the heart of the world, between our soul and the soul of the world. And so what I want to do together is this, is to give you a simple practice that we will do together as a, as a group of wayfarers that have come from many different traditions, many different Sufi lineages, many different, what I always call threads of love, because for me each Sufi path is a thread of love, has a slightly different color. For example, the color of my Nakshbandiya Mujidadiya lineage is golden yellow. And different Sufi paths have different colors. They are these threads of love that can be woven together in the tapestry of the heart. Because we are all lovers of God. And we are all here in service to love. And also in service to our beloved who has created this beautiful and terrible world in his own image. And it is for us, because we know the secrets of the heart, to also work with the heart of the world, to welcome his peace back into his world where it is needed, in the same way as we welcome his love back into our own hearts where it is needed. Now, traditionally for the Sufis, one of the ways of accessing this deep place, this, the core of being, is through the imagination. The imagination is the intermediary between the world of mystery and the world of visibility. It is the key to going from one world to another. And just as we do that within ourselves, so we can do it within the world. And, and that is what I want to practice this afternoon. And so first of all, just close your eyes and relax. And be present within yourself. Just be present within yourself. You each have your own way of being present within yourself. Just to be present. Be present within your own being. Just be there. Don't do anything. Just be present. And then watch your breath. Just watch the breath. Just watch the breath. Watch as it goes in and watch as it goes out. Watching the breath is, of course, takes us to this connection between the worlds, takes us to this place. And then while you are still watching the breath, imagine the moment 
when you were most in love with life. Imagine that moment in your life when you were completely in love with life, when you felt its joy, its beauty, its sweetness. It could be a moment of being in love for the first time. It could be a spring morning. It could be the silence before a thunderstorm. We all have those moments when life was present in its intensity for us. When life was alive. Now just be in that moment. Be in that moment. Feel it. Be present in it and feel it. And open your heart in that moment. Just open your heart in that moment. So you can feel the love affair that is life of which you are a part. Feel that love affair of life of which you are a part. And in that moment, you can feel that your heartbeat is part of the heartbeat of the world. Your heartbeat is part of the heartbeat of the world. This ancient, ancient connection you have with this beautiful world. And your heartbeat is part of the heartbeat of the world. And then you follow that heartbeat from your heart to the heart of the world. Just like you follow your breath, you follow the heartbeat. You follow your heartbeat from your heart to the heart of the world. It isn't so far away. It is in this moment when life is alive when you are present in the love affair of life, in this magical moment when life becomes alive, your heartbeat connects you to the heartbeat of life, to the heartbeat of the world. And when you are in the heartbeat of the world, when you are present there, in the heart of the world, which is also your heart, because it is all one. You pray to God. You pray to God in whatever way you pray to God. With those words of longing within your own heart, with this intimate inner connection that exists between lover and beloved that Sufis have treasured for centuries. You pray to your beloved. And you pray that once again his peace can return to his world. You pray that the peace of your beloved can once again come into his world, his world that has been ravaged by so many wars, by so much pain, by so much suffering, by so much violence. This world you know only too well, that has forgotten the sweetness of his peace. And you open your heart and you pray in the very core of the world, to your beloved, asking him to open the gates of grace so that the peace that is in the core of creation, the peace of the soul of the world, can once again be felt in the land of humanity, in the plants and in the trees and in the people, in the streets, 
wherever we live, wherever we breathe, that his peace can return. You make your prayer, your divine connection between life and the creator of life, between lover and beloved, And you call upon the world to open its heart again, its heart that has been closed because of so much misuse and abuse. And you cry to the world, open your heart. We need your love. We need your peace once again in the world. And you do this for the sake of your beloved and the sake of his creation. And you are there at the center of life, at the center of the world, crying out to God. And because we are Sufis, because we are lovers of God, because we want nothing for ourselves, our cry is always answered. It is one of the secrets of being a Sufi, of being a lover of God, that the cry of the heart, the cry of humanity is our cry. We cry his tears for him. We cry the pain of separation. And our cry is heard, heard by the angels who guard the heart of the world, held by the beings who stand before God. We are simple, ordinary people. We are nothing special. But we cry his cry for the world. Our tears are his tears, our pain is his pain, our longing is his longing. And the world needs his peace. The world needs the peace that is hidden in the heart of the world. The peace that is always pure. The peace that carries his blessings, the peace that touches every creature Every leaf, every tree, every blade of grass is blessed by his peace. Because his peace is written with his name. And it carries the ancient song of creation that was before the beginning, in which all things are blessed by him. And all things carry his stamp. And so we welcome his peace back again into his world. through our cry, through the cry of our heart, through our prayers, through our devotion, even through our body, we bring the peace of the world back into this world. And the ancient beings that have guarded the peace of the world help us in this work. Those angels of grace and angels of power and angels of beauty that hold the heart of the world as a sacred trust. They hear our cry. They hear our prayer. And they know we need their help. Humanity needs the help of those who are in service to God. And we open our hearts, and through our hearts comes this peace of the world, this ancient peace that flows like the river flows, that falls like the rain falls, that comes like the tide comes, and brings with it blessings, and brings with it remembrance and harmony. 
And if you look within your own heart, you will see now there is a seed of this peace. Like the earliest flowers of springtime, a little seed of this peace. this peace of the world. And you hold it in your heart. And you thank the beloved for giving you this treasure for life. This seed of peace that belongs to the great ocean of peace. And as you sit with it, it grows. It fills your heart until your heart is at rest in peace, until there is this ancient peace in your own heart. This peace that belongs to life, that belongs to the sacred nature of life, the hidden face of our beloved, that is within life. And you are this peace. You have always been this peace. And you rest in this peace. And you are present in this peace. And through you, this peace comes back again into life, into this troubled times. And through you, this peace becomes alive. And there is magic in this peace, and there is beauty in this peace. Because it comes not from this world of discord, but from the hidden heart of creation, from the very core of being. And this peace is needed in the world, just as his love is needed in the world. And you need to learn to breathe with this peace, to be with this peace and breathe with it. Because with your breath, this peace becomes part of life, part of the flow of events, reaching those who are troubled, reaching those who are in despair, reaching those torn by violence, hurt by those who turn against them. Through your breath, this peace goes into the rivers of life where it touches those who need it. And it goes around the world, and as it goes around the world, it starts to sing the ancient song of creation. And your life is part of this song of creation this sacred song, this great mystery of life, this love affair, which we know in our own heart, this love affair that calls us to God and yet is part of our everyday life. And in this love affair, there is peace. And this is the peace of the world, the peace that has been forgotten, the peace that has been abandoned and rejected. And you are this peace, and your being is this peace and your body is this peace, and your thoughts are this peace, and your emotions are this peace.
and your prayers are full of this peace. And whenever you want, you can return to this peace within your own heart and bring it into your breath and bring it into your life and into the life of your family and your friends and the life around you because it is part of the breath of life just as your prayer is part of the prayer of life. And it has been blessed with those who, by those who watch over us, who guide us and direct us, by those who bring us together and those who draw us apart. It is one of the ancient secrets of creation, this peace, that belongs to all of life, to which we as lovers of God, as carriers of the secrets of love, this ancient brotherhood, who are the doorkeepers of love for the world, we also hold the key of the heart to this place of peace. So oh, friends, slowly return to your body, return back, welcome yourself back into this world, wiggle your toes and stretch your hands and God bless. <laughs>